Nantes, February 2016. Whilst discussing the origins of the term turbulence, two researchers, David Le Touzet from Centrale Nantes and Andrea Collagrossi from the Institute of Marine Engineering in Rome, come across a hydraulic study drawn by Leonardo da Vinci in a Stanford lecture. Leonardo, the first time in a context of dynamic. Ah, yes, yes. 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 Then a few months later, looking at simulations of the impact of a wave on a column, Andrea sees phenomena that look similar to the study drawn by Leonardo da Vinci. He suggested David that they study the drawing to mark the 50th anniversary of Leonardo's death. Guardavo un po' questi disegni di Leonardo e alla fine penso che con una simulazione nostra potremmo riuscire a riprodurre qualcuno di questi disegni. Perché ne penso? Ma il problema è che non abbiamo la grandezza del disegno, no? La... Eh, sì, infatti... With 15 years of research collaboration already to their name, Davi thinks it's a great idea for their Franco-Italian team. Andrea and his colleague Salvatore visit David at Central Nantes. They discuss how they could go about reproducing this famous drawing with their numerical simulations without knowing exactly what was drawn. In Rome, Andrea researches the drawing's history. He even goes to Vinci to explore the city's museum and libraries to see if he can glean any information. I wonder how Leonardo managed to imagine the structures of these turbulent flows. He calls on Rodolfo Papa, painter and art historian. Papa explains that da Vinci saw drawing as a complete system, encompassing all human knowledge from anatomy to geology, including botany. He thus used drawing to describe the laws of nature instead of using mathematics as we would in later years. For da Vinci, drawing was a real analytical tool and not simply descriptive. Meeting with science historian Jean Dombre in Paris, David gets confirmation that Leonardo was a methodical observer of nature rather than a theorist. In the meantime, Salvatore carries out the first simulations, but they don't come close to the drawing, so he goes back to the Vinci area to get a better understanding of the types of flows that Leonardo observed and drew. In France, David undertakes various experiments, also trying to determine the flow conditions as drawn by da Vinci, in particular the scale of the representation and the depth of Leonardo's basin. David then suggests using the Centrale Nantes supercomputer to make much more precise simulation. In Rome, Salvatore and Andrea call on Paolo, Andrea's graphic designer brother, to get better 3D visualizations of the simulations. The simulation data produced by the supercomputer is too big, and hard disks have to be sent by post to Italy. With the new data, and thanks to Paolo's visualizations, the simulations are much more realistic. The turbulence is clearly visible in the water, but the air-water interface is still very different from Leonardo da Vinci's drawing. In looking at the origins of the design and the specialist comments, the team notes frequent mention of the role of air in the observed phenomenon. 
Salvatore and Andrea therefore decide to introduce air modeling into the simulations. After hard work on the models, Salvatore shows David the latest simulations during his visit to Rome. The simulations now allow for more accurate modeling of the bubble phenomena. Rome, April 2019. Andrea, Paolo, Salvatore look at the latest versions of the simulations. They immediately called David to tell him that after three years of research and toing and froing between France and Italy, the simulations are finally close to Leonardo da Vinci's drawings. Even today, we wonder how Leonardo da Vinci came to make these drawings. How could he imagine the eddies he couldn't see in the flows? How did he analyse the details of these complex flows, when the science to describe them came only centuries later? Today we have advanced theories and methodologies that allow us to visualize these flows in detail, and we realize that they are much more complex than Leonardo imagined. Indeed, the turbulence that makes up these flows is still not fully understood today. And somehow, isn't that what keeps us going? <laughs>